Over the past few years, the world has been experiencing a seismic shift in the technological landscape. We've seen the rapid rise of a technology that is making headlines everywhere, both optimistic and fear-inducing. I'm talking about artificial intelligence. If this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. And not develop it any further until we really get a handle on this. It's increasingly difficult for voters to differentiate between real and fake. Hey AI or artificial intelligence is something that is affecting a variety of different industries right now. From how we write software to how we make games to how films are being made. But are we overhyping the power and ability that AI has or are we actually on the brink of some Skynet level phenomenon? In this video, we're going to be talking about how AI has already changed the film industry and whether or not it's getting close to completely taking over. But before we can dive into how it's changing the film industry, we first need to clear up some common misconceptions around it because it's not what all the fear mongering is making it out to be. Even though there's been a lot of talk about AI in more recent years, AI isn't anything new. It's actually existed as a concept for a long time and has been realized in some form or other since the 1950s. But over the years, the definition of what it is and how we actually use it has changed. And the most important part of understanding what artificial intelligence is, is understanding what we mean when we say the word intelligence. There are many different ways you can define intelligence. Heck, there are even different types of intelligence, but the general definition is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. And that's basically what AI does in today's landscape. This is very different from some of the headlines we've seen. I've already heard a few people talking about how AI is gonna replace us at our jobs or it's just gonna take over everything, but that's not the case at least not yet. When people talk about that kind of AI, what they're actually referring to is ASI or artificial super intelligence or even AGI, artificial general intelligence, none of which exist just yet. We still live in a time where a subset of AI called artificial narrow intelligence or ANI is all we have. And if you're worried about AI completely taking over, then just know that ANI is also referred to as weak AI. ANI refers to intelligence systems that have been designed or trained to carry out specific tasks or solve particular problems without having to be specifically programmed to do so. ChatGPT, which is a major talking point lately, is a form of artificial narrow intelligence. It was programmed to generate a text response to a prompt that is given. It's been trained against an absolutely huge data set to try and understand your prompt and then try to predict the best answer based on the data it was trained on. But how is AI being used in the film industry today? Lately, it feels like every single app or tool I've been using is trying to make use of AI in some form. Google and Microsoft have been making waves by working to implement ChatGPT or something similar to their search engines. I use Notion to write my scripts where I'm regularly prompted with the Ask AI button and Adobe Premiere now touts that it has AI powered video editing tools and there are so many more examples of how AI is being used out there. But when you take a step back and look at it, most of the ways AI is being used in the film industry today can be put into one of three categories idea generation and script writing, VFX, animation and imagery, or post-production and editing. So let's start off with idea generation and script writing, and what better way to start than with the tool that has been taking the world by storm, ChatGPT. One thing I wanna say off the bat is that we're gonna be talking about a variety of different tools in this video, and almost every single one of them has an alternative that might even do a better job than the one that we're talking about. But the ones we decided to choose are the ones that are most popular. There's been a lot of chatter about how ChatGPT can replace screenwriters and be able to write screenplays with just a single prompt. And at first glance, you might even believe this. If you do a quick Google search of how to write a screenplay with ChatGPT, you'll be presented with a number of guides on how to do so. At the surface level, this might look impressive, but the cracks start to show once you read one of the guides or start playing around with it for yourself. There is still a lot of work required from you to get a decent output. You should be able to prompt for the story, the environment, the characters, etc., etc., before you actually dive in. And even with all of that, you still have to do a lot of work to get something that is usable. But you might be asking yourself, couldn't ChatGPT just provide me with all these prompts? Well, sure, and many people use ChatGPT to create ideas or add context to certain aspects of a story or character, but we're not at the point yet where ChatGPT can just write a good script for you from scratch. It's more of a companion that you can use to help write better scripts or stories faster. If you get stuck figuring out how to word something, you can give ChatGPT a prompt and use the output as a good source of inspiration to improve your own writing. If you're experiencing writer's block and can't think of an idea, just ask ChatGPT to generate some ideas for you and maybe one of a thousand ideas will be good enough to use. And that's exactly what one of my favorite YouTubers, Tom Scott, did about two years ago. But keep in mind that he used an older version of ChatGPT called GPT-3, whereas we are currently on GPT-4. 
He prompted GPT-3 to generate 1,000 ideas for a Tom Scott video, and it ended up working fairly well. Sure, there was a lot of noise and nonsense topics, but overall, he got some useful ideas out of it. He still had to do the work to sift through all the nonsense and ended up with a topic that wasn't true, but he made a pretty entertaining video about it. And just this year, 2023, we saw the Writers Guild of America strike against the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. And one of the items on the agenda was the writers wanting to limit the use of AI, such as ChatGPT, in the writing process. They want it to be used only as a tool that can help with research and idea generation instead of a tool that can replace the writers themselves. There are probably a bunch of executives out there that see AI as a way to cut costs in the content generating process, which was traditionally one driven by creatives. But I'm curious to hear from you though. Would you be interested in watching a movie or TV show that you knew was written by AI, even if it was good? The next category we're gonna talk about is VFX, animation, and imagery. There are a lot of cool tools becoming available that are helping creative people bring their ideas to life. But let's talk about the huge player in the AI landscape that falls under this category. The one that made headlines for basically being able to do what ChatGPT does, but with images, Dolly. Dolly is an AI system or tool that can generate or edit images based on a description in natural language. It's also made by OpenAI, which is the same company that created ChatGPT. It was trained on a huge subset of images, their text descriptions, and how they relate to one another. And when provided a prompt from the user, it can generate an image for you. Sometimes to horrific results, but it's often pretty good. You can even tell it which style you want the image to be generated in, such as Van Gogh or Picasso. There's a short film that was created using Dali called Critters. It's an animated short in the style of a documentary with some comedic undertones and is considered to be the first animated short film that is 100% designed using AI generated visuals with Dali. I actually think it's pretty good and I recommend you check it out after this video. We'll leave a link in the description. The creator of this short film generated all of the little critters and environments using Dolly and worked with animators and voice actors to bring them to life and to publish it. It's still fairly limited, but very impressive. It shows us how these tools can be used to create things that might not have been created if they didn't exist and how it can help speed up the production process. The creator of Critters said in a behind the scenes video that tools like Dolly and AI are changing the entire method by which we create you're basically creating as fast as you can think. And Critters isn't the only short film that has used Dolly to be made. Another really good one is called The Frost, created by Waymark. The short film is also very impressive, but if you've seen any Dolly generated images, you can mostly tell that this is what they used to make it. After watching these two short films, I can't help but get flashback to those flash animation days from when I was younger, and I'm actually pretty excited to see the kinds of stories people are able to put to life using tools like this. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There's already been a lot of discussion and debate on the ethics of using tools such as Dolly. Do you remember this image? Well, this is an image that fooled a lot of people, which probably included a lot of Catholic grandmas into thinking the Pope is some style god. And you probably already know where this is going. This image was generated by AI. Upon closer inspection, it kind of begins to fall apart, especially when you analyze some of the details like the length of his arms or just take a look at his hands, but it raises some concerns about what we see and really makes you question which images you see online are real and which ones are fake. Another issue that often comes up with Dali is that the output is based on a subset of images that the system has been trained on. These images were created or taken by someone else and often have some copyrights associated with them. The burning question is usually about who holds the rights to those images or if they should be credited in some way. I won't go too deep into the laws in this video, but we are entering new territories where there isn't much regulation. So before we start seeing major use of these types of AI generated images in the commercial space, we definitely need to find some fair use regulations around them. With all that said, Dolly isn't the only service that allows you to create images or animations from scratch. It's just the most popular. Facebook or Meta released their Meta AI tool that does the same thing Dolly does, but instead of only generating static images, it generates a video clip for you to use. A lot of them have a specific look that makes it obvious we're viewing something generated by AI, but some of the clips look really good. And keep in mind that this is just the early version of this software. We're bound to see major improvements in the future. And another technological advancement that is kind of scary is the ability to generate voices or replace faces with the use of AI. If you've heard about deep fakes, well, this is basically what I'm talking about. AI advancement has given us the ability to train a model to either sound like or look like a specific person, which opens up a lot of cool creative doors, but it also opens the door to a bunch of potential unethical behavior. This new technology can bring back actors from the dead and have them appear in more movies. We've already seen similar technology be used in a variety of different Star Wars movies or shows. We've seen Princess Leia, Tarkin, and even young Luke Skywalker making reappearances. This was done with traditional CGI, but now with the power of AI, this type of work can be done much quicker. 
The Irishman used de-aging technology to pretty magnificent results and even used some AI systems to help check their work. But with AI, as we've already mentioned, this type of work can now be done quicker. And finally, I wanted to talk about the category of video editing and post-production. There are now AI algorithms that can help decide which shot is best to use, remove unwanted elements from those shots, and help make those shots look better with the use of AI-driven color grading or noise removal. Most of the things these tools can do isn't anything we couldn't already do before, but the idea is to do it faster. Adobe implemented a variety of tools to help speed up workflows in their video editing software, Premiere. You can now easily match colors across different clips without the need for manually tuning them. They made it easier to clean up interviews and talking head videos by automatically removing awkward pauses but still resulting in a natural flow. And Adobe aren't the only ones. Capwing, Magisto, Glia Cloud, and many, many more are using AI to enhance and speed up the video editing workflow. There are a lot of companies that are either being formed or beginning to implement AI in really cool ways into their tooling to help improve the creative process in a variety of different ways. But we're not gonna go into all of them in this video or we'd be here for hours. So let's move on to the next section. Will AI take over Hollywood? A common fantasy, and I'm calling it a fantasy because that's really what it is, is being able to come home, turn on the TV, and just tell it to play a movie with these actors, in this style, and with this story, and just have it be generated for you within minutes. Similar to what we saw with Dali, but much more expansive. Now, what I'm about to say might not age very well, and I may be proven wrong, but I still think we're very far from that point, and we might never get to that point. And honestly, we should be asking ourselves if we ever even want to get to that point. Because even with all the crazy advancements we've seen lately, there's still something missing that I'm not sure could ever be replicated. Creativity. AI is currently trained to do something on some set of data. So when it's doing that thing, such as generating images or text, or possibly in the future some movie, it's doing so based on stuff that it already saw. Now, one could go on to argue that this is very similar to how artists get inspiration from the work of previous artists, but there's still something slightly different that makes it less special. It's the fact that these tools are directly taking elements from what they saw to create something net new after combining and modifying them in some unique way. The end result seems to be missing that unique touch that makes the work of the artist more unique. But what about using AI to help determine which movies to make? Over the past few decades, we've seen a shift in how Hollywood makes films. There has been a bigger focus put on intellectual property, which results in more sequels, reboots, and remakes than ever before. And the reason for this is because studios know it works. At the end of the day, studios need to make money. And taking less risks with a new Marvel or DC movie instead of creating something brand new that might not resonate with audiences could set them back. And this is another place that AI will surely have a huge role to play. The role of predicting and picking what is most likely to be the next hit, or at least a guaranteed return on your investment. This predicting of what will be the next hit already exists in the music industry and somewhat in the film industry. But now with AI powered tools that can analyze a huge subset of data much faster than any human or even group of humans, I imagine we'll begin to see more and more movies that are basically tailor made to your desires. Similar to how TikTok and YouTube can pick the next best video to keep you hooked and watching, it's a matter of time before AI helps Hollywood take it up a notch, if it hasn't already. When all of this massive AI hype started, I was a bit skeptical because I saw it for what it was, a tool that can enhance our ability to do things versus actually replace us, at least in sectors where creativity and unique problem solving is involved. And as AI has continued to mature, I've been feeling more and more comfortable with that mindset. I have no doubt that AI is here to stay and that we'll continue to find new and innovative ways to integrate it into our tools and daily lives, but it's not something that will replace all directors and actors, at least not yet. This is in part due to ethical reasons, but also for reasons such as those I've already mentioned. But what do you think? This is a topic that I find really interesting and I'd love to continue the discussion in the comments. So if you have any other cool information or just wanna tell me that I'm completely off base with this video, let me know in the comments and we can chat it out there. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to Filmstack already and I know most of you haven't, then subscribe so you don't miss out. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and until next time, have a good one.